Hello my friends and welcome to the Silver Ball Museum. It's a retro arcade down here in Asbury Park. Kind of a rainy day so I figured this would be the perfect activity. If we're not heading to a theme park, let's go check out some games. So I invite you to come along. Let's go check this out. Taking a look here, I think there was somewhere upwards of 160 different pinball machines at this one location. And there's a sister location down in Delray Beach in Florida. But these basically run the gamut from, I believe I even saw some from mostly the 70s, 80s, 90s, but even some from like the 50s, 60s, back when pinball was considered gambling and was banned. So I think my first stop here, the first pinball machine that's caught my eye is 1987 Williams Fire, which apparently during the multi-ball, a five alarm fire breaks out. And so like kind of the events, ooh, the glare is kind of rough here. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we're gonna try to film this the best we can. I'm gonna give it a whirl. playing as a kid is this, the World Cup Soccer from 1994 when it was held in the United States. There of course is a mascot. It's kind of a lot plainer than I remember, but there is a goalkeeper here that you have to score goals against, which is pretty awesome. And then they, I do like the all the flags that they have of the countries that played right there. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's give this a shot. It's called Close Encounters of the Third Kind from 1978, made by Gottlieb. And it's electromechanical, meaning it doesn't have like circuit boards or anything. It's like full of just a series of relays and stuff. I think the telltale sign of that is the way that it keeps scores instead of having like the little LCD or what have you, the LED screens. It actually has like a mechanical score. All right, I'm excited. This is probably gonna sound real cool too. But what does this say? We are not alone. Do they have the little devil's tower or whatever it's called? Oh, that's the artwork here. Huh. And this guy, he looks awful friendly. I mean, wouldn't you want to encounter him? So unfortunately, I started the game, I shot my first ball, and uh, that's where it ended up. That is really unfortunate. All right, I don't know if this counts as like a close encounter, but um, I had a close encounter with the Close Encounters of the Third Kind pinball machine. So this one caught my eye. This is called Bonsai Run. I don't believe I've seen in person. Ooh, the lights are really crazy, but I haven't seen a pinball machine that has like the second level, the back level, like the scores are all the way up here, but the back part of it, whatever that is called, is part of the game. What? Gravity would be so difficult to defeat because as soon as you hit it up, it just came straight back down. Cool in concept, but I guess it's more of a novelty. I don't know how exactly you make it work. It should have probably been more like a, I don't know, what are those called? Those games of Pachinko or something like that? No. What? Plinko? Plunko? I, okay. I completely lost myself on that take, but um, either way, cool, more of a novelty, don't know. But for me though, this right here looks really fun. It is old school 1979 Star Trek, the original series. They came out with a build from here, Bally did.
So sadly, that wasn't the most interesting game. The only interesting bit was that this takes you back to the beginning where the ball starts. And I noticed that this one, even though it released around the same time as Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the scorekeeping is completely different. It is not electromechanical. This one must involve circuit boards. And I forgot something, I forgot something. This entire thing here, I had to look it up because it always bothers me. I need to learn things and not forget them when I hit record. This whole thing is called a back box. So the game extends for Bonsai Run up into the back box. There we go. So they actually have a machine just about the cyclone, like the Coney Island cyclone. This is all about Coney Island, huh? That is so cool. I'm trying to squeeze in here so I can get up here. Ride the cyclone three times to get a jackpot. Huh, ride the comet for a million? The comet, I don't know the comet, but here's some of the, ba the back box art. Let's try to use those terms, commit them to memory. And wow, how cool. But unfortunately, it is uh, under restoration, so I guess I'll have to come back sometime. So here's an interesting one. This is the 1975 Atlantis. How is it that in like the span of like five years, pinball machines just completely look different? Like this one must be electromagnetic given the, uh, the way it keeps score, but holy smokes, the art on here is very like Flash Gordon. And then as we move down to this board, this playing field is just, I'm interested to try it out just because of this entire side over here is just, it just drains. It just goes straight to the drain. I am confused by that, but yeah, let's see how it plays. So I think now we're kind of just looking for some of the others that have been mentioned a lot. Junkyard, I'll mention just because that was one of my favorites growing up. Uh, I played it a lot. This is probably my most played pinball machine, to be honest, now that I think of it. I dumped a lot of quarters into this one, or tokens. Hit the deck, another Neptune themed one. Ah, cool layout, cool layout. Oh, this was a terrifying one that I remember playing. Basically, in the 90s, we were all playing this style. And it was copy-pasted with every different IP and idea you could think of. Here's something I've never seen before. This is called Joust. And you actually fire the silver ball back and forth at each other. What? This must be madness. Is this where they got the idea for Crossfire? Now this right here, the Williams 1993 Twilight Zone. That one, this is one of my favorites. If I ever had the money and space to buy a pinball machine, this would likely be it. Because this thing had bonuses upon bonuses. Oh man, this is nostalgia right here. Now here's one that people have been saying I needed to check out. This is called Cactus Canyon. I don't know what all the hubbub is about. 1998 Valley Machine. Got you. Do you see the outlaw? I hit him. Woo. Come on. This game's turning me into Mrs. Doubtfire. Stuff that's happening on the LCD screen is kind of hilarious. Those cactuses were just fighting. Oh. oh, that one did not go where I was hoping it would go. Oh no! Oh, kept it alive. Gonna get it. Trying to get it. Oh, it's gunfight. What is this? Look at this gunfight happening. Oh, I got him! Direct hit. Oh. This is 
is pretty cool. They have some vintage skee-ball machines here. They actually have quite a few vintage games. They also have this, uh, I remember playing on one of these for ice hockey. And then I think they have, yeah. All right, first of all, they have one of their old Tetris models here. But just beyond that, one of the original 1972 Pong machines. Insane. Look at that little screen. Huh. They also have a legit bunch of like old school cabinets here, like the original Super Mario, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Frogger, and Centipede. This is just, what a lineup. So I walked around looking for like the oldest machine here. And uh, shout out to this Indiana Jones cabinet from 1993. The Indiana Jones Pinball Adventure, amazing cabinet. But uh, I think this, this is it here. The oldest game in the museum. This is Knockout from 1950. And the thing that makes it unique compared to all the other wood frame ones that we've seen here, or wood rail, is this. This little mechanical guy right here. So that is really cool. We're gonna try to activate that. These flippers are the littlest things. Oh my goodness. What? And then here's something that you used to have to do is push the lower plunger in order for it to pop out here and then be ready to be used by the upper plunger here. But you have to push on this thing. Okay. Let's, uh, let's make some magic here. So there is some sort of odd little barrier that pops up there and comes down and I can't figure out why. Um, one thing that's really cool to note is that like all the ropes, they're actually bumpers. That is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I noticed is the scoring methods here since they didn't have like the electromagnetic type of setup going. So you can see like what my score is right now is one million. And then you look here for the hundred thousandths place, 900,000. And then somewhere on this very hilariously, like what is going on there? I don't know. He's having a bad day. They, I, oh, the doctor says tilt, it's not lit up. But my score was 90,000. I don't know who he's shushing at a boxing match. Um, this, this lady is going bonkers here on that poor guy. And, oh no, old men fighting. Oh no. And this guy knows Kung Fu. Terrific. This one looks pretty cool. This is actually, and you know, we have to touch it back to uh, theme parks and or Disney. Here is the 1964 Gottlieb World's Fair pinball machine, which it seems like it was actually there. Huh. The game was produced to coincide with the New York's World's Fair, 1964 and 1965. I actually have a video from the location of that from a few years ago, which I'll put up in the corner here. I'm absolutely loving the details here. So like they did almost like a full promenade thing in the middle here, which is a lot of fun. Oh, wow. This is so cool. It's not much in terms of complexity, but yeah, just wanted to point that one out there. All right, I wanted to finish this one on one of the more modern ones. This was produced in 2013. Only 1,000 units were made. And from everything that I hear, this is supposed to be, oh, it says right there, that was an IAPA 2012 winner. This thing is supposed to be one of the best pinball machines in recent history. I don't know why, I found it very unforgiving. When I was up at New Hampshire and went to a fun center up there for my coaster credit hunt, I played this for a while, and boy oh boy was it difficult. Oh no. Of course when we start recording it's the shortest ball ever. Oh, I got the pity ball. It's really throwing me off that it's shooting it by itself. Oh no. Okay, I feel like this game isn't so bad 
now that I'm on free play, right? Oh no. Oh! Wait, what are you supposed to do? I didn't even notice. It took me until ball three to notice there's a flipper up here. Oh no. Uh, so the screen is just really nice. And it looks like you can go through almost the entire movie going through this. Because I locked one ball, it went all the way to the Emerald City. And then you can actually meet up with a Tin Man, Scarecrow, and Cowardly Lion. It is a little dark, um, kind of hard to see. I, I didn't even notice that there's flippers. One flipper right there, center frame. And then that one up there, I thought it would be the right, but it's actually the left. And then the flippers down here are actually ruby slippers, which I thought was a lot of fun. And then there's some sort of mechanic here at the bottom for there's no place like home. The little state fair thing is right there. I, I'm not sure what to make of this because it is on the on this um, left drain here. I don't know. But anyway, there is a lot of details to love up here. And there's even another flipper up here. Oh my goodness. So anyway, guys, yeah, this apparently is the modern classic pinball machine, The Wizard of Oz. So I think that's gonna do it for me here at the Silver Ball Museum. This was amazing. I cannot wait to come back. Probably not gonna do too much vlogging that time unless they bring new machines here. There was a couple that I didn't see. One was Doodlebug. The other one was something about Cattle Poke or something like that. I'm not sure, but I'm excited to come back. The array of games that they have here is amazing, especially these more modern ones. And it's really cool to see the evolution of these pinball machines, especially the way they score and how thematic they've gotten from the completely obscenely beautiful Wizard of Oz to just the simple like drawing on the of the back box. It's just so cool. Anyway, I've gotten kind of a new appreciation for pinball machines. Hopefully you've enjoyed following along. So for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye. Bye.